Ja, herzlich willkommen, liebe Zuschauer. Heute ist unser Reise in die USA endlich da. Wir schalten nach Amerika, nach Denver zu Chris Helby. Chris Helby, unser Quarterback in der European League of Football, ist in, für uns das erste Mal hier online. Und ähm, wir führen das Interview auf Englisch. Das heißt, ich wechsle jetzt auf Englisch. Hi, Chris. Uh, we are happy to have you here. And uh, it's a pleasure to see you. How are you, Chris? I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, thanks, fine. So um, last time when we had a, a conversation on uh, a Messenger on Twitter, uh, you were talking about um, you had something wrong with your hand. You were going to the a hospital so uh, what was wrong with your hand what what happened yeah so actually i played uh for the potsdam royals last year in the gfl and i broke my thumb in the semifinals um so i wasn't able to play in the championship game and i had my initial surgery out in germany and then when we spoke again here um this last november i had to get uh the pins removed from my thumb um, everything's good from it since then. Um, but yeah, so I, I broke my thumb and been rehabbing and kind of getting back into shape. So that's something I had to deal with this off season. So um, there are a few uh, questions I have uh, because uh, the people know that you were playing last uh, uh, time for in Germany for the GFL for the Royals in, in Potsdam. And you were in the German ball, and uh, it was a close loss uh, against the Schwäbisch Hall Unicorns, as far as I know. So, first question is, how did you start uh, playing football? What made you, um, what was the reason that you started to play football? How old were you? Yeah, so my dad played football in high school, um, and he was going to go play in college, but he ended up staying home and just getting a job. He actually didn't end up going to college. So as long as I can remember, football was part of our lives growing up, just watching the Broncos. Um, and then as soon as I turned six years old, I was able to play flag football. And that was a no brainer for me. And I fell in love, but it's a little different out here. I started at six. And honestly, as long as I can remember, it's been a part of my life, been a part of my family's life. It's a little bit different, but um, I wouldn't want it any other way. Uh, so it's it's really I, I don't want you to ask that question, but as far as I can hear, when you live in 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 Denver, so you you have to be a football fan and you have to be a, uh, as well a fan of the of the Denver Broncos. Yeah, you should be. Um, Denver right now, there's a lot of people moving in from other other cities um, around the United States, so there's quite a bit of different fan bases. But yeah, if you're from Denver, you have to support the Broncos, especially. When I was in high school, when they lost their first that first Super Bowl, and then they won the second one with Peyton Manning, I think that really got the city excited. Um, they've they've slacked since then, so there's a lot more Denver Nuggets fans, which is the basketball team. They're really good out here. Um, but yeah, I I'm one of the true fans. I, I've stayed through the highs and lows. Um, last year when you played for the Royals. Did you have an eye on the European League of Football and the games and maybe some of the teams? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, just because it was football in Europe and living out there, um, playing in the summer, there's no American football going on. So if we played on a Saturday and on Sunday, I'd maybe watch a game here or there. But um, a little bit, but honestly, not a ton. It was my first first year in Europe. Um, I knew about Vienna just because me and Coach Chris have had a relationship for a couple years. So I followed um, the Vikings quite a bit. Um, but besides that, not not too much. I was really kind of focused on the German football season. Um, but I did definitely follow the Vikings. A few weeks ago, I had a conversation uh, with Chris, the head coach of the Vienna Vikings. And I um, He told me that you already uh, stayed in contact uh, last year uh, and the decision to come to Vienna to join the Vikings uh, was not uh, spontaneous. We could think about it before. Uh, how did it come? Um, not, not as such, but I guess you could look at it that way. When Vienna did offer me for this 2023 season, it was a no-brainer um, for me. 
I loved it in Potsdam. Everyone treated me really well. It was a well-ran organization. They made me feel at home. Um, so Vienna was one of the few teams that I would have left Potsdam for. And um, I know Jackson did a great job last year. So it was kind of in that gray area of um, if Vienna is going to be looking for a quarterback or not. So I kind of tried to hold out as long as I could and it worked out. Um, but it was not new that I was going to play here, but I definitely knew if they were going to give me the opportunity, I was going to take it and run with it. No question. So, um, Vienna is the reigning champion, and um, they made it in the first year in the in European Football League to the top. And I think it's a very um, nobody. Some of the the experts were expecting that because they say the Vikings had uh, a very big um, count of homegrown players, and um, Chris as well knows who is who fits in uh, a team which is uh, equipped with many homegrown players. And um, to find the right players from the USA is, is a very good job. And, and Chris knows about a lot of, of uh, let's say, the skills, especially your skills. So if, if, if you want to describe your skills to our fans, what, what, is, what are your skills as a quarterback on this position? Yeah, so for me, um, when it comes to football, I'm super competitive. I'm going to do whatever it takes to help the team to win. Um, I know last year a couple games or at least one game I threw for over 500 yards because we needed the passing game. And then a couple games we relied on Kari, who's also coming to Vienna. And for me, the same reaction after the game. As long as we won, I was happy. So there, Vienna's getting someone that's super competitive and just wants to do what it takes to win. Um, and then beyond that, I think um, I extend plays very well um, and just just make good decisions with the football, especially here in Vienna this year. There's a ton of playmakers around the field. So it makes my job easy as long as I just control what I can and get guys the ball who need to have the ball in their hands. Last year, the Vienna Vikings uh, faced the Hamburg Sea Devils in the final game in Carinthia in Klagenfurt uh, in September. A very strong team. Do you know something about them? Uh, do you think that they will make it again to a final game? Um, I do not know a ton about them. Um Not a lot. I honestly didn't follow them too much. I watched the championship game and I saw and just obviously seeing around, they had a really good defense. Um, and I know that defense kind of gets you to that position in the season um, to play in the championship. So I, I haven't really kept up on too much recruiting either this season in the ELF. I've been kind of just worried about Vienna and um, seeing what some of my former teammates are doing. But besides that, I haven't really kept up on teams outside of people I know. Um, so that that's a tough question, but I, I've been to Hamburg just once and I know it's a bigger city with probably a lot of football talent. So I'm sure they'll, they'll be fine. And um, it seems like a lot of these teams are recruiting well. So I think it'll be really competitive all around this year. So the schedule for you, when will you uh, leave for Vienna? How long do you stay uh, at home now? And when 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 can we see you the first time in Vienna? When you're going to start uh, your your exercises and your training? Yeah, so we're working on a plan right now, but the plan is to head out to Vienna that first week of April. Sounds like uh, maybe April 3rd through 6th, something, something like that, just to uh, have the opportunity to kind of get comfortable in Vienna before football really starts. Um, and then I think with the rules of the ELF, the season practice starts in May. Um, I'm not too sure how that works, but yeah, for me, it's, I'm excited to get out there the first week of April and kind of get comfortable, get to know the guys, um, be able to learn the offense quite a bit and um, do some things that will help me be comfortable the first of May and hopefully the guys around me as well. Um, I think somebody of, of my colleagues from the papers asked you a few weeks ago, do you know something about the, the, the Vienna habits of, of eating some special things? I, uh, somebody told me that you're fond of Wiener Schnitzel. Did I hear that wrong? Yeah, I am. I'm a, uh, I'm a picky eater, but that was definitely something that I uh, could get behind eating quite a bit. Okay, so um, the next thing is, uh, when you come to Vienna, what is the first, um, let's say, 
thing you are looking forward to do? Are you going to do more conditioning or more strengths or what is uh, besides the work working with your teammates and 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 the playbooks and all that stuff? Yeah, so for me, I'll be in shape by the time I get out there. So the biggest thing is building relationships, being being uh, the quarterback position. Um, you got to have guys rely on you and you got to be able to count on guys as well. So for me, it's just building a relationship with the guys outside of football, hanging out with them for that first few weeks, going and doing stuff away from football, getting to know them about their families, things like that. Because when times get tough in a game or I throw an interception or something, it's easy to pick guys up for someone to pick me up when they know that it's a deeper connection besides football. So I'm going to use those first few weeks to really try to get to know as many people as I can and just make sure when May comes, I know most of my teammates more than football, um, just because that's, I think that's huge, especially in leadership positions is being able to count on people and you can trust people and count on people when you know they're invested for the right reasons. Um, talking about relationships, how important for, uh, for you, the fans of a team, the Winter Vikings uh, having, uh, let's say, lots of fans and uh, they're really waiting for, for new players like you. They're waiting for a new quarterback. Uh, Jackson did a good job on the field and he as well was very, um, the fans liked him very much. So how important are fans for you and their support for, for, for the team and for you as well? Yeah, it's huge. Um, when I signed with Vienna and it went public, I was overwhelmed with the support of the fan base and the people in Vienna. So that was really cool for me, um, being over here in America and just having people reach out and welcoming me. So it made me feel at home, even though I'm not there yet. So I think fan support is a huge thing um, during game days and also outside of game days. It's nice to feel supported and nice to have people around you that, you know, um, enjoy watching you and um, so that's, that's huge. I think it's, I think it's big and Vienna's done a great job so far. And I think with winning last year, it's only going to get bigger and more support in Vienna. So I think, uh, the fan and player relationship is a big, big part of it. The fans are going to, to support the teams of all over Europe. The fans are in every town where there's a franchise located. Um, they say the European League of Football should be a tool, let me say it like this, um, to make uh, American football more uh, popular. Because uh, before we had uh, some uh, leagues in, in some countries, we had the German Football League, we had the AFL, the Austrian Football League, and, and so on, in Italy as well. Um, but there, was, there were no professional leagues. So the change from the let's say normal football where you don't can earn for uh, playing football uh, to a professional league should be an impact on the American football sports. How do you think, uh, do you think that's true that a professional league all over Europe will have a positive impact of making more popular, making American football more popular? Yeah, for sure. I think um, the better product that you can put on the field, the more fans are going to watch it. The closer games, um, the better offenses, the better defenses. That just draws crowds, whether they know what football really is or not. Um, and a really cool part for me is teams will be coming, I know not this year, but teams can come from Barcelona, from Italy, and play in Vienna. So that's that's really cool to be a part of. It's just people from different cultures coming to your city and being able to come together just for a sport. That's that's really cool. Um, so I think being able to play teams from different countries will definitely grow the game and just the competitive aspect. And I know they're doing a great job on social media and social media is a big part of our society today. Um, so I think it is going to keep growing. It's, it's, it's on the right track. And I think so far this year, there's been some positive things. Um you were to, you talk we were talking you were talking a few seconds ago ago about social media um i know that you have a twitter account but uh, i think as well as a facebook account so fans can get in contact with you via social media are you going to answer some questions if somebody if if uh, a little pupil or uh, if if uh, some is if some classmates are going getting together and saying okay how can we get into uh, in contact with uh, chris can they write you yeah, no, I think that is definitely something um, that I think is awesome. You know, for me, football is great. But the reason I do this is to hopefully leave a positive impact on the communities that I live in. So Potsdam last year, I hope 
I left there. I didn't leave with the championship, but I know that I left some positive um, things on some people. So yeah, I'm not one of those guys that you can't reach out to or anything like that. For me, it's uh, it's bigger than football. It's who can I affect in the right way and hopefully leave a mark on um, when I go back to the States. So that's, that's something I think that's, that's big for me. Um, just the ability to be a normal person and talk to people and no one's too big for any situation. I think that's, that's a pretty cool aspect. And yeah, um, I think that's, that's cool when people reach out and it's, it's cool for me too, to be able to talk to people or when people come up to me and hopefully I can just leave them with something positive. Um, the fans, uh, I was talking uh, to before I was meeting you today for the Zoom interview, um, asked me as well to ask you, uh, do you have some special, let's say, um, wishes uh, to the fans? What uh, somebody, if, if you come to Europe and if you come to Vienna, there are some things uh, where you think it would be nice if I could uh, meet fans or if I could uh, have this or that. Do you have some some uh, uh, just a message to the fans? What what will you say the, to the fans maybe today on on this interview in this interview? Yeah, so not nothing special that's crazy out of the box. Um, for me, like I said, it's just the opportunity. I know that I'm I'm in a lucky situation here. I get a Go live in Vienna for six, seven, eight months, whatever it's going to be. Hopefully the longer, the better. Um, and meet people from different cultures that I knew I totally grew up different from and they grew up different from me. So for me, it's just just a friendly face. I um, feel like I can be approached by any of the fans or anybody in the organization and have a conversation with. Um, and for me, it's just anybody um, that I can leave a difference on and they can impact me in a positive way. So um, for me, I, I love the support. I love the support that the Vikings players and the organization get. Um, and I, I think they'll keep that up. Um, but no, I know just talking to some of the players and some of the coaches that we we really appreciate what the people of Vienna do for the organization. And it's, it's a huge part in winning as well, knowing that you're supported um, by the people around you. Um, that sounds really good, and I'm happy to to hear that. Um, the last question is more a little fun question. If you have the opportunity to uh, have uh, lunch or dinner with a famous quarterback, uh, maybe also from the from the from the NCAA or from the NFL, who would you um, uh, like to have you on the table with? Yeah. So this this question just got a whole lot easier for me because. My favorite quarterback has been Derek Carr, um, but I am a Broncos fan, and he was the Raiders quarterback forever for the last, I don't even know how many years. So whenever someone would ask me who my favorite quarterback is, I would feel so wrong telling him Derek Carr since it's the Broncos rival. But I love the way he carries himself and um, the way he kind of put the organization on his shoulders when they went through some rough times. I know they had some guys get in trouble and dealt with injuries and you would never tell it out of him. He always carried himself very even keel and um, carried himself the right way. So that was that was big for me because life's not always easy. You're going to face ups and downs. And being in sports, you're in the limelight, so you can't really share those emotions as much. So just the way he carries himself and continues to battle through adversity, I think that's that's someone that I'd like to sit down with and pick his brain. Chris, I, I'd say... Really, thank you for the last 20 minutes because uh, we are always, I, I promised you that we will about uh, do it about ten, uh, 20 minutes long. So uh, I wish you the, uh, a nice journey to Vienna. And mm -hmm. I say thank you for uh, being our guest today. And I hope uh, we will meet in Vienna for a real interview, not of via Zoom. We, I hope uh, we will meet on the field after the game. And um I say bye-bye and see you in Vienna. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you.